Hey, time for another project. This is going to be a calibrator to calibrate this. Courtesy of PCBWay, of course. Some PCBs sitting inside this box. Um, we're going to make a calibrator because I want to calibrate my unit here, which is a Hewlett Packard HP 437B power meter. Basically, it's a power meter for measuring the power of your RF signal. So you have a cable. These cables are pretty expensive, like $60 up to $100 a piece, because they always get thrown away and they get rare. Um, we've got the sensor head, which is the real expensive bit. For some reason, these are just, yeah, hundreds of dollars. I got this one pretty cheap. I was lucky. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're really expensive when they're working. So you plug that through the cable into the front of the unit, and then you can calibrate it. You screw this on here, and you can calibrate it and set the zero and all that. And then whatever you put in here, it will show on the front panel here in either DBM or watts. So, um, yeah, you can measure and uh, see what your transmitter is outputting, or you can use it to calibrate your, uh, your function generators and all that sort of stuff. So to do that, I need to make sure this is reading correct. Now, there's a uh, piece of equipment to calibrate this where you actually input a signal and um, it's a known reference signal and then you can tell this you know you can adjust it and tell it that it's got a certain signal and then adjust things so it's reading what you're inputting the problem is they're a little bit hard to get um, they're called a uh, 11683a range calibrator um, but they're a very simple voltage divider an adjustable voltage divider and um, the only tricky thing you need is you need a dead one of these and uh, which they're pretty cheap and then you can input your signal you basically take all the thermal couple stuff away that's usually what dies in these someone you know often people will um, pump too much RF energy in burns out the thermocouple or the diode or whatever that's in there depending on the variant and um, then it's dead but the actual circuit board inside is still good and you use one of those you basically uh, hot wire in your um, your voltage and then you plug that into there and you can set an exact voltage to get your uh, your exact like power reading so I have designed a PCB oh we got the usual pen and stickers fantastic always use the pens and um, we're gonna make our own version to get us out of trouble so we have got three things I've got a front panel a rear panel because I'm going to put it into this enclosure. I've really condensed it down to be a little handheld sort of small thing. I don't want it too big on the bench. And then we got the uh, PCBs for inside. So let's get those ones out. Now the way I condensed this a lot was by doing the old trick of um, putting the through hole resistors uh, vertically. So they stick up and then the leg bends up over and down again. Oh, I thought about doing service mount, but I decided, eh, I want to make it easy to produce, easy to like build as a kit. And if any of you guys are going to go along and uh, make your own, uh, three holes easier. It's, I've got enough space if I did the uh, the vertical resistors, and it just means it's easier to put together. You're welcome. So what's going to happen is we have got the enclosure. This is just a Takachi enclosure. Oh. We'll have a quick look, of course. Fantastic build quality from PCBWay, as usual. Top-notch stuff. And um, I've also... Uh, the the pin-out that goes from here to the... Uh, there's a, a range switch. I put it there, so pin on the uh, PCB to the switch, the rotary switch pin. That way, when I'm wiring it up, <laughs> I don't have to dig through all my, my notes and data sheets and stuff. I can just look at it there. And on the back, it's got the calibration uh, details. So how to adjust this so you can adjust that. You, you just need a ohm meter and um, you can uh, get this spot on. So that will slide in. Fingers crossed. It fits. Oh yeah, just, just nice. Tight like a tiger. Beautiful. So that's all right. And then we have the front panel. No, sorry, the rear panel. So this is the rear panel. 
which will sit on there like that. USB input, because it's just using USB power. We've got a switch to select if you're going to use internal voltage reference or an external voltage reference, and then there's a DC reference output there. So you can put a DC reference in, exact 15 volts if you've got a very, very accurate reference, um, and you don't want to use the internal one because maybe uh, you want something more accurate, and then you can monitor the output here as well. And that is an exact copy of the shape of the original uh, panel. So, um, yeah, I pulled that shape from the uh, Takachi data sheet. And then, of course, we've got the front panel. Right there. So, this big hole here is where the uh, sensor module guts are going to go. So, that's the guts of one of them. Uh, that way. So there's a, the connector on the back, and then the thermocouple joins in there. So that will sit there like that. Beautiful. Some little M2 screws or something through there. Little nuts on the back. That'll be fantastic. And we have a switch, two switches on the front. One is to turn the output on and off, and then the polarity. So you can go, you know, forward polarity and backwards polarity, positive and negative. And of course, the range switch, that's going to be just a rotary switch. And um, you just, yeah, turn the knob around to whatever power setting you need. Hopefully that's in focus. So the first step, I guess, will be to get this thing put together. So there it is, all together. Uh, it does work, um, with a few caveats. So, we have a problem with the bottom two ranges at the moment. It all works quite well all the way around, but the last two, the negative 20 dB and the negative 25 dB, are a little bit wibbly wobbly. Um, I think it's a combination of things. One might be that this switch is a cheaper switch I got in Akihabara. Uh, I should get a, uh, a much higher quality one with um, gold plated contacts or something like that just so we get less contact resistance and less contact resi resistance variation when we're switching around because if I give that a bit of a wiggle the uh, display on the uh, power meter does wibble a little bit. Um, also I think maybe this might be a bit so-so. Um, it was from a, a damaged one. So I think I'm going to make a version 2. We will. I'll show this one working, um, but I'm not going to release the files for this version. There'll be another video coming with a newer version where we're going to make our own version of the uh, the power sensor circuit board. There is another uh, video on YouTube uh, where a guy makes one of these, and it's a, a great piece of kit. It's actually helped me out in making this one. Um, link down below, full citations, because I'm going to have a look at his schematics, because he recreated the little uh, power sensor circuit for his and I'm gonna have a look at his schematics and uh, make my own version a three-hole version his is SMD I'm gonna do it three-hole just to keep it in the theme of things and um, yeah that way two two benefits of that is that we're not using a, um, a power sensor that may or may not be uh, a bit iffy a bit damaged and if you want to uh, follow along and make your own you won't need to source a broken one of these um, it will be just parts from DigiKey or Mouser, and uh, yeah, all brand new, all known working, and it will be less messing around. Uh, these connectors, you can still buy them from DigiKey and Mouser. They are a bit expensive, about 20 bucks or so, um, but yeah, they are available at, off the shelf um, for immediate order at, as of the making of this video. So um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do for the version 2. I'm going to replace that switch and make this part integrated on the PCB. So, um, yeah, you'll see there's also a little bit of a bodge here. This uh, trim pot and a, a resistor. 
in the uh, the power calibrator from HP, the official one, they have a 196 ohm resistor across the um, the input from the uh, where the uh, thermocouple or diode would input into this op amp. So um, that's what I've put there. It's a 180 ohm resistor with a 20 ohm trim pot, so I can really dial that in, get it exactly 196 ohms, and um, yeah, it's working besides those two ra smallest ranges. So let's plug it in and see how it goes. I have already um, adjusted all this. I won't bore you with that. It's just uh, follow the instructions on the back of the PCB. Um, twiddle it around until it's all looking good. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, you're good to go. So let's plug it into USB power, and I'll plug the front into the uh, the power meter, and we'll see what the different ranges say to see if we're, we're at least within the ballpark for the good ranges that do work. Alright, so we're plugged in, turned on, and I've got it set to 0 dB, and we're getting, hopefully you can see it there, 0 0.1. So that's pretty close. Now if I go up to 5 dB, 4.95, yeah, that's pretty close there. 10 dB, spot on. 15 dB, and 20 dB. Now if I go back down, so at 0 dB, negative 5, negative 10, negative 15, so that's reading alright, it's near negative 16 there, see it's getting a little bit wibbly wobbly here, if I go down to negative 20, yeah it's going to say please 0 and stuff, if I'm wiggling the, uh, the switch around, you can see it's all over the place there. And then negative 25, doesn't even want to see. So that's uh, the, the problem I'm having with the lower ranges there. So I think that's probably partially the switch, because as I wiggle it, it's, yeah. So it does work, apart from those two lower ranges. We'll go back to uh, zero there. So that's where we're at at the moment. I'm going to um, leave the video here uh, with it partially working and uh, we will make another video soon with the upgrade and then I will release all of the files once it's working. But that is one step forward. So video number one is done. I'll give it a one tentative thumbs up because it does work mostly. All right, hang around. We'll have another video out for you soon and we'll get this thing all working perfectly.